A human-based computation game or game with a purpose GWAP is a human-based computation technique of outsourcing steps within a computational process to humans in an entertaining way gamification. Louise von Ahn first proposed the idea of «human algorithm games» or games with a purpose GWAPs, in order to harness human time and energy for addressing problems that computers cannot yet tackle on their own. He believes that human intellect is an important resource and contribution to the enhancement of computer processing and human-computer interaction. He argues that games constitute a general mechanism for using brainpower to solve open computational problems. In this technique, human brains are compared to processors in a distributed system, each performing a small task of a massive computation. However, humans require an incentive to become part of a collective computation. Online games are used as a means to encourage participation in the process. The tasks presented in these games are usually trivial for humans, but difficult for computers. These tasks include labeling images, transcribing ancient texts, common sense or human experience based activities, and more. Human based computation games motivate people through entertainment rather than an interest in solving computation problems. This makes GWAPs more appealing to a larger audience. GWAPs can be used to help build the semantic web, annotate and classify collected data, crowdsource general knowledge, and improving other general computer processes. GWAPs have a vast range of applications in variety of areas such as security, computer vision, Internet accessibility, adult content filtering, and Internet search. In applications such as these, games with a purpose have lowered the cost of annotating data and increased the level of human participation. History The first human-based computation game or games with a purpose was created in 2004 by Luis von Ahn. The game was called ESP because players had to come up with labels for images and try to guess what labels a randomly designated partner was coming up with. The game marked the first of many microtask games. Microtask games are games containing a simple task that can be solved quickly without the need of any credentials. More specifically, ESP was an output agreement game. Games with a purpose categorized as output agreement games are microtask games where a pair of randomly assigned partners try to match output with each other given a shared input visible to both. In 2006 Von Ahn introduced another microtask game called Peekaboom. This game extended upon ESP by having players associate a labels with a specific region of an image. Peekaboom demonstrated a new type of microtask game known as inversion problem games. In inversion problem games, two players are randomly paired together where one is assigned as the describer and the other as the guesser. The describer is given an input which the guesser must reproduce given hints from the describer. In Peekaboom, for example, the describer slowly reveals small sections of an image until the guesser correctly guesses the label provided to the describer. In 2008 Edith L. M. Law created the game called Tagatune. In this game, players label sound clips. Tagatune contributed a new category of microtask games known as input agreement games. In input agreement games two randomly paired players are each given an input that is hidden from the other player. Player inputs will either match or be different. The goal of these games is for players to tag their input such that the other player can determine whether or not the two inputs match. In Tagatune, players describe sound clips and guess if their partner's sound clip is the same as their own given their partner's tags. Also in 2008, Foldit was introduced by Seth Cooper. Foldit was the first game with a purpose to be considered a macrotask game. Macrotask games contain complex problems usually left to experts to solve. In Foldit, player attempt to fold a three-dimensional representation of a protein. While this is a hard problem of computers to automate completely, it is not hard to score. Thus players are able to focus on their score to perform this complex task without much knowledge of biology. Examples Apetopia The Apetopia game helps determining perceived color differences. Players' choices are used to model better color metrics. 
The Apetopia game, which was launched by University of Berlin, is designed to help scientists understand perceived color differences. Apetopia is an easy game, accessible to all the public which requires no special skills except manual dexterity that all the experts of this kind of game usually possess. The Apetopia game helps determine perceived color differences. Players' choices are used to model better color metrics. This game is intended to provide data on how the shades of color are perceived by people in order to model the best color parameters. Ortiga Ortiga is a web platform currently offering six artwork annotation games as well as an artwork search engine in English, French, and German. Three of Ortiga's games, the Ortiga game, Ortiga Taboo, and Tagatag, are variations of Luis von Ahn's ESP game later Google Image Labeler. Three other games of the Ortiga platform, Corrido, Ortiga Quiz, and Combino, have been conceived so as to complement the data collected by the three aforementioned ESP game variations. Ortiga's search engine relies on an original tensor latent semantic analysis. As of September 2013, Ortiga had over 30,000 pictures of artworks mostly of Europe and of the long 19th century. From the Prometheus Image Archive, the Rijksmuseum, Amsterdam, the Netherlands, the Staatliche Kunsthalle Karlsruhe, Karlsruhe, Germany, the University Museum of Contemporary Art, campus of the University of Massachusetts Amherst, USA. From 2008 through 2013, Ortiga has collected over 7 million of tags, mostly in German. 180,000 players, about a tenth of whom are registered, and in average 150 players per day. Ortiga is a joint research endeavor of art historians and computer scientists aiming at both developing an art work search engine and data analysis in art history. Topic: ESP game. The first example was the ESP game, an effort in human computation originally conceived by Louis von Ahn of Carnegie Mellon University, which labels images. To make it an entertaining effort for humans, two players attempt to assign the same labels to an image. The game records the results of matches as image labels and the players enjoy the encounter because of the competitive and timed nature of it. To ensure that people do their best to accurately label the images, the game requires two people chosen at random and unknown to each other, who have only the image in common, to choose the same word as an image label. This discourages vandalism because it would be self-defeating as a strategy. The ESP game is a human-based computation game developed to address the problem of creating difficult metadata. The idea behind the game is to use the computational power of humans to perform a task that computers cannot originally, image recognition by packaging the task as a game. It was originally conceived by Luis von Ahn of Carnegie Mellon University. Google bought a license to create its own version of the game Google Image Labeler in 2006 in order to return better search results for its online images. The license of the data acquired by Ahn's ESP game, or the Google version, is not clear. Google's version was shut down on 16 September 2011 as part of the Google Labs closure in September 2011. Aeterna Aeterna is a game in which players attempt to design RNA sequences that fold into a given configuration. The widely varied solutions from players, often non-biologists, are evaluated to improve computer models predicting RNA folding. Some designs are actually synthesized to evaluate the actual folding dynamics and directly compare with the computer models. iWire <inaudible> <inaudible> iWire is a game for finding the connectome of the retina. Topic. Fold it Crowdsourcing has been gamified in games like Fold It, a game designed by the University of Washington, in which players compete to manipulate proteins into more efficient structures. A 2010 paper in science journal Nature credited Fold It's 57,000 players with providing useful results that matched or outperformed algorithmically computed solutions. Fold It, while also a GWAP, has a different type of method for tapping the collective human brain. 
This game challenges players to use their human intuition of three-dimensional space to help with protein folding algorithms. Unlike the ESP game, which focuses on the results that humans are able to provide, Foldit is trying to understand how humans approach complicated three-dimensional objects. By watching how humans play the game, researchers hope to be able to improve their own computer programs. Instead of simply performing tasks that computers cannot do, this GWAP is asking humans to help make current machine algorithms better. Guess the Correlation Guess the Correlation is a game with a purpose challenging players to guess the true Pearson correlation coefficient in scatter plots. The collected data is used to study what features in scatter plots skew human perception of the true correlation. The game was developed by Omar Waga at the European Bioinformatics Institute. Judemos Judemos is a game aiming to build a large semantic network. People are asked to associate terms according to some instructions that are provided for a given word. The French version of the produced network contains so far more than 160 million relations between 2 million lexical items October 2017. The project was developed by academics of the Laboratoire d'Informatique, de Robotique et de Microelectronique de Montpellier, Montpellier II University. <laughs> Nanocrafter Nanocrafter is a game about assembling pieces of DNA into structures with functional properties, such as logic circuits, to solve problems. Like Foldit, it is developed at the University of Washington. Ontogalaxy Ontogalaxy is a game in which players help to acquire common sense knowledge about words. As implemented as a space shooter, Ontogalaxy in its design quite different from other human computation games. The game was developed by Marcus Krause at the University of Bremen. Topic: <laughs> Phrase Detectives. Phrase Detectives is an annotation game geared towards lovers of literature, grammar and language. It lets users indicate relationships between words and phrases to create a resource that is rich in linguistic information. Players are awarded with points for their contributions and are featured on a leaderboard. It was developed by academics John Chamberlain, Massimo Poesio and Udo Krushwitz at the University of Essex. Philo. <laughs> The Philo allows gamers to contribute to the greater good by trying to decode the code for genetic diseases. While playing the game and aligning the colored squares, one is helping the scientific community get a step closer to solving the age-old problem of multiple sequence alignment. The problem of multiple sequence alignment is too big for computers to handle. The goal is to understand how and where the function of an organism is encoded in the DNA. The game explains that. A sequence alignment is a way of arranging the sequences of DNA, RNA or protein to identify regions of similarity. Topic: <laughs> Play to cure genes in space. Play to cure genes in space is a mobile game that uses the collective force of players to analyze real genetic data to help with cancer research. Quantum Moves Quantum Moves is a dexterity and spatial problem-solving game, where players move slippery particles across quantum space. Players' solutions on various levels are used to program and fine-tune a real quantum computer at Aarhus University. The game was first developed as a graphical interface for quantum simulation and education in 2012. In 2013 it was released to the public in a user-friendly form, and has been continually updated throughout 2014. Reverse the odds 
Reverse the Odds is a mobile-based game which helps researchers learn about analyzing cancers. By incorporating data analysis into Reverse the Odds, researchers can get thousands of players to help them learn more about different cancers including head and neck, lung, and bladder cancer. See Hero Quest See Hero Quest is an iOS and Android-based game that helps advancing the research in the field of dementia. Topic: Smorball. In the browser-based game Smorball, players are asked to type the words they see as quickly and accurately as possible to help their team to victory in the fictional sport of Smorball. The game presents players with phrases from scanned pages in the Biodiversity Heritage Library. After verification, the words players type are sent to the libraries that store the corresponding pages, allowing those pages to be searched and data mined and ultimately making historic literature more usable for institutions, scholars, educators, and the public. The game was developed by Tilt Factor Lab. Train robots. Train Robots is an annotation game similar to Phrase Detectives. Players are shown pairs of before, after images of a robot arm and blocks on a board, and asked to enter commands to instruct the robot to move from the first configuration to the second. The game collects natural language data for training linguistic and robotic processing systems. <laughs> Wikidata game The Wikidata game represents a gamification approach to let users help resolve questions regarding persons, images, etc., and thus automatically edit the corresponding data items in Wikidata, the structured knowledge repository supporting Wikipedia and Wikimedia Commons, the other Wikimedia projects, and more. <laughs> Zombilingo Zombilingo is a French game where players are asked to find the right head a word or expression to gain brains and become a more and more degraded zombie. While playing, they in fact annotate syntactic relations in French corpora. It was designed and developed by researchers from Loria and Université Paris-Sorbonne. See also Page Hunt